In this video lecture, we're going to look at gas transport of carbon dioxide. We've already seen how oxygen's transported, and now we'll turn to look at carbon dioxide transport. Now, carbon dioxide can be transported in a number of different ways. One, it could be dissolved in the plasma. Not much, about 7% is transported in that way. It can also be bound to the protein portion of the hemoglobin. About 23% of that is um, carried in that way. So you can see here in the equation, CO2 combines with hemoglobin to form um, carbamino hemoglobin, uh, which we'll see that again in a little bit. But that's, again, attached to the protein portion, not the heme. The majority of carbon dioxide is transported as carbonic acid. 70% to be exact. Now notice this is an equation. We've seen this before. This is one of those equations. It's very important to get down. Here, carbon dioxide is going to combine with water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonates. And that equation, we're going to use deriving the equation to the right to be able to transport carbon dioxide. This equation also is controlled by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. So let's look and see how this happens in our tissues and blood or lungs and blood. So first, let's look at the body tissues with the capillaries. So here, let's say we have lots of CO2 building up. You're doing something active, building up CO2. That CO2 is going to diffuse from the body tissues into the plasma. And then from there, it diffuses into the red blood cell. Once it's in the red blood cell, it either will bind with the hemoglobin, do that carbamino hemoglobin, or it's going to combine with water. And because of the presence of carbonic anhydrase, in those red blood cells, that carbon dioxide and water will form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then dissociates into bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions. Now the bicarbonate ions are going to diffuse out in the plasma. And since they have a negative charge to them, they easily dissolve in the plasma and the water because the water, remember, is polar, so it's going to accept these negative ions very readily. But that means I'm adding a bunch of negatives into the plasma, and I don't want that. I need to make sure my charges are neutralized. So for every bicarbonate that i got to move out, I'm going to move a chlorine in. Chlorine notices negative charge as well. So if I add a negative charge to the plasma, I'm removing a negative charge by having chlorine moving into the red blood cell. That is called a chloride shift. Again, it's just to keep the charge of the plasma the same. Now, I don't want to build up negative charges, okay? So when we get to the lungs, that bicarbonate is going to diffuse back into the red blood cell. It's going to combine with the hydrogen ion and form carbonic acid. Now, since I'm moving negatives in, I have to have chlorine negatives moving out. Again, just shifting those charges so we keep everything the same. So bicarbonate is going to combine with hydrogen ions inside the red blood cell, forming carbonic acid. The carbonic acid then dissociates because of carbonic anhydrase, and it or changes shape and goes and becomes carbon dioxide and water. The carbon dioxide will then diffuse out along with the carbon dioxide that's attached to the hemoglobin. That diffuses out into the plasma. The CO2 then diffuses from the plasma into the lungs, and we exhale it. So you can see where this equation that we've been talking about earlier becomes very important when talking about carbon dioxide transport. Now let's tie that back in with how oxygen is transported and that Bohr effect. Remember I talked about the Bohr effect being the shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. Okay, so this is kind of how it happens. Again, the idea is an increase in CO2 is going to cause a larger release of oxygen. That was one of the factors that I said causes a shift to the right, making more oxygen available to the tissues. Well, let's look at it in this association with what we just talked about with carbon dioxide transport. The main part that we see talking about the Bohr effect is going to be right in here and with this oxygen. This stuff happens too. We have CO2 dissolved in the plasma. We have CO2 combine with water and forming carbonic acid and bicarbonates in the plasma, but that's a very slow reaction because we don't have any carbonic anhydrase to do that. So that happens on the side. They're showing that in the slide, but really what we want to concentrate on is in here, a tie-in with the oxygen. 
Remember, some of that CO2 is going to combine with hemoglobin and form carbamino hemoglobin. But the big majority of the CO2 goes, diffuses into the red blood cell, forms carbonic acid, and then dissociates into bicarbonates and hydrogen ions. The bicarbonates, remember, diffuse out, as we said before, chlorine coming in. That's the chlorine shift. The hydrogens are the big guys where we're trying to tie in with the Bohr effect. If I have this equation constantly going to the right, I'm going to build up hydrogen ions. Increase in hydrogen ions means a drop in pH. It becomes more acidic. So those hydrogen ions are going to end up binding to hemoglobin. That's the deoxyhemoglobin. It's deoxy because that buildup of the hydrogen ions combining with the hemoglobin makes the hemoglobin that was oxygenated let go of its oxygen. So the more hydrogens I have, the more this equation runs to the right so that the hydrogen can combine with the hemoglobin forming the deoxyhemoglobin. That means I release a lot of oxygen. That oxygen then can diffuse in the tissues. So that's the Bohr effect. This idea of having more CO2 driving this equation to the right, making lots of hydrogen ions. Those hydrogen ions then want to combine with the hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin dumps its oxygen so it can make the deoxyhemoglobin with the hydrogen. That means lots of oxygen available, goes out to my tissues, my tissues get tons of oxygen. A related effect, but at the alveoli side of things now instead of the tissues, is the Haldane effect. This is just kind of the opposite of the Bohr effect. This is going to be an increase in oxygen, causes a release of CO2 from the hemoglobins in the lungs. So now we're just looking to see combining how CO2 is transported and oxygen and what's going on at the lungs. So again, this stuff happens as well in the plasma. It's not going to be related to the Haldane effect. It's just there happening slowly, a little bit. Again, where we really want to look is here with the majority of the bicarbonates that are, or the carbon dioxide that's transported as bicarbonates, and then how oxygen is related to that. So we get to our tissues. The bicarbonates diffuse into the blood. The bicarbonates want to combine with hydrogens. Remember, those hydrogens were tied up here as deoxyhemoglobin. So we got to make those hydrogens to let go so we can combine the bicarbonates with the hydrogens and get the carbonic acid. Well, the more oxygen I have, the more that those hydrogens will dissociate or separate from the hemoglobin, and that way it makes it available for the hydrogens and bicarbonates to form. So the, I get lots of oxygen. The oxygen then ends up binding to the hemoglobin. That makes the hydrogens or the hemoglobin let go of the hydrogen. The hydrogen then is now available to combine with the bicarbonates. So now the hydrogen bicarbonates form. They make carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then gets converted into CO2 and water, and the CO2 is diffuses across into the alveoli and we exhale it. So the more oxygen I have, the more it binds with the hemoglobin, making the hemoglobin let go of the hydrogens. And that means I've got more hydrogens now available to combine with bicarbonates. And I can drive the equation here to the left, making lots of CO2, meaning I can exhale lots of CO2. Okay, So that's what's called the Haldane effect. And that's going to end our little look at carbon dioxide transport. Last thing we'll be doing on respiratory physiology will be control of respiration. That is control of how fast the rate and depth we breathe.